Long story short, the ratings of all these playoff games were huge. There's a tremendous level of interest in the NFL right now, and with four great matchups coming up next weekend, I bet it continues. Of course, when I see a trend like this, my first thought is, all right, how do we profit from it? Sure, the media companies broadcasting each game are winners, but they also pay a fortune to the NFL to get the rights. Not as clear cut. Wait a second. I inst- instead, I want to recommend DraftKings, which has emerged from a couple years of intense competition as the market share leader in online betting, sports betting. This stock was one of the biggest winners this year. It was up 209%, but it stalled out in December and has pulled back over the past couple of weeks. But when DraftKings pulls back, just as the NFL playoffs are racking up major ratings, well, guess what? That's right, you're getting a great buying opportunity for DraftKings. Now, remember, the first pillar of the DraftKings bull thesis is simple. They've already won. They're the leader in online sports betting roughly five years since the Supreme Court legalized the practice. At first, it looked like FanDuel and DraftKings were emerging as double winners. But last year, DraftKings surpassed them in market share. And right now, they got a lot more momentum. They have a fantastic daily fantasy business that makes watching even blowout fourth quarters interesting. Good synergy with the networks there, by the way. In short, DraftKings is a last man standing story, like Uber and Rideshare or DoorDash and food delivery. Now that the battle for market share is over, and the whole industry is more focused on boosting profitability, these companies can spend far less on marketing, advertising, and incentives to pull in new users. Sure enough, DraftKings is operating much, much more profitably than it used to be. This is pretty amazing. See, the company achieved its first quarter of positive earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization in the second quarter of last year. Uh, though that number turned negative again in the next quarter for 2023, they should have an EBITDA loss of 95 to $115 million. Put that in perspective. When DraftKings first gave you an EBITDA forecast for 2023, they originally were projecting $475 to $575 million in losses. So last year turned out to be a lot better than expected, and that's what matters. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com. Or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.